I'll get your subscription, my pretty. And your little dog, too. Welcome. I'm the professor, Dr. Chris McCusker, and welcome to another episode in the Quarantine Management Institute where we are learning to learn in new ways together. This episode gives an overview of some uh, episodes that are coming up concerning leading to a crisis. We want to first discuss what are the effects of a crisis and understand what that does to us. Uh, there are experts in this area. We can read more about this, but certainly um, we do know some things. Uh, I have a background in psychology, and there are some things we know about crisis situations and what, what happens to people. Uh, secondly, I want to explore a couple cases with you. The case of Tulane University and Hurricane Katrina uh, in New Orleans. Um, I lived through that and saw really excellent crisis leadership and then also explore the case of the BP oil spill. The Deepwater Horizon platform blew up and caused uh, the loss of life and environmental harm in Louisiana. And then I want to wrap up by sharing with you some some guidelines for leading in a crisis. Uh, to the best I can understand, uh, these are some guidelines that we should discuss and think about, hopefully start the conversation. In addition, there are some other episodes that I'll connect in a playlist on leading through a crisis, which hopefully will speak to some of the issues that people are facing right now in the, in the COVID-19 pandemic. We're in the survival stage. You know, the survival stage uh, in this particular crisis is ongoing. It's not a, a quick crisis. It's, a, it's an ongoing crisis. We're still in survival. We're still trying to get through the storm, so, so to speak. Every day, uh, we're looking at numbers. Every day, we're looking at people who are dying, suffering, families in pain. Uh, it's not easy. It's not an easy time. Let's think about what happens in a crisis. The immediate effect of a crisis is disorientation. We become unhinged from our lives, our plans, what we were hoping to do, how we thought things would go, uh, in the, at the end of Mar second half of March and April have not gone the way we thought they would go. The world was turned upside down. Uh, we have to reorient ourselves to one another, to our work, to our families, and it is not easy to do. So leaders should know if you're leading a family or an organization, a business or a nation, disorientation is what people experience. And we have to manage that. We have to respond to that disorientation. At the same time, we're dealing with fear. I'm worried for my own safety. I'm, I'm, I'm washing off groceries. I'm not going nowhere. I'm trying to keep safe. I'm trying to keep my kids safe, my parents safe. It's not easy, you know, and uh, this is a particular virus which, uh, as we've been told, has a very high degree of efficiency. It spreads easily from one person to the next. Different levels of information have happened at different times, and so uh, keeping safe means keeping abreast of what's going on. Uh, but at the same time, that exposes us to the ongoing human tragedy, causes a lot of pain, which is another consequence of this type of crisis. We're seeing families and people in serious pain from the loss of loved ones. Um, we see demands being made, uh, stress, stress. Um, I read an article yesterday about how this kind of situation activates a deeper part of our brain, the ancient part of our brain. And so in a kind of stressful crisis like this, we are more ready to engage in conflict. We're more ready to argue. And uh, that can make it all the more difficult when we have more difficulty getting along with other people, uh, which is a possibility from the stress as well. We're also dealing with structurelessness. You know, our teams are uh, upended, our companies are upended, um, our workday has changed. We are now working often at home with family members. We need to organize that to get time to have phone calls, time to focus, time to think, time to reflect. But at the same time, we have to engage the family members, the people we're living with under the same roof. It's not easy. It's not an easy time. The consequences of a uh, crisis, immediate consequences are disorientation, fear, uh, sadness, stress, structurelessness, and as a leader, if you're somebody who's leading a family or a team or an organization through this, you have to respond to those issues in your, in your leadership. In the next couple episodes, we're going to look at a couple cases, the case of Hurricane Katrina, the case of BP. Those cases teach us some lessons. I may also um, include a, a couple other examples. And we're going to then wrap it up with 
some advice, uh, the best of my ability. Uh, I'll share my advice about how to lead through crisis, what, I've, what I think I've learned. Hopefully, uh, that will start a conversation. As always, when we study something, the more you study, the less you realize you know. And if anything, hopefully we can share our experiences and our stories and get a new understanding of our confusion when it comes to leading in a crisis. Let's go.